And look, the example that Kim and I just used was probably a bit cheesy. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but it, it needs to be a little bit cheesy. You know, don't be afraid to be a bit cheesy with it because it really doesn't hurt. And I know when, when we're growing up and we're immature and we're teenagers, nobody wants to seem, be seen to be too kind of friendly or anything, you know. We're all trying to be cool. But, you know, you, once, once we're in adult relationships, trying to be cool is just the worst thing you can be doing. So offering something, yeah, a little bit cheesy. I mean, we, Kim and I use a lot of cheesy sort of examples. But we grew up with The Muppet Show, right? So does everyone remember The Muppet Show? Okay, The Muppet Show was pure vaudeville, hilarious cheese, wasn't it? I mean, it was cheesy as, but it was great. We loved it. You know, it was, it was something that hit a chord with the entire world, you know? I mean, the, even the non-English speaking world would learn to talk from Sesame Street and The Muppets because they were a little bit cheesy, but don't be afraid to, be, to do that. And, you know, I mean, perhaps what we did, you know, probably a bit too far, but it does work, you know, mm. and, it, and it doesn't have to be tongue-in-cheek or contrived either, just, you know, make sure it's heartfelt, but yeah, put a bit of, put a bit of theatre into it, it doesn't hurt. We, when we first started doing this with our kids, they just would laugh at us so much <laughs> about it, and they would just like really take it back, because we just started doing it out of the blue, um, but they still loved it, and you could tell that they love it, you know, and we will do it with um, their friends. Mm. When, when their friends come over. And I really notice now with their friends, you know, they'll walk in the door and you see them kind of waiting for it. <laughs> you see them kind of, it's true. they're waiting for you to go, ah, and call out their name, you know. Because after a while they actually do come to expect it and you see them walk in the door. And you know, I'm, I'm not mean, so I, I, don't, I don't not do it on purpose. But I'm sure. sure that if I didn't, they would be really quite, yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. absolutely. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to be consistent now. Yeah, come she's an insider to see me today. <laughs> yeah, so this is really, really powerful stuff in terms of building good attachment um, with the people around us. You know, use people's names, look in their faces. And I guess, you know, the other thing to realise is that different people have different styles of attachment. You know, a lot of psychologists say that that's set, you know, and that our styles of attachment don't change. Well, you know, you do need to understand that some people um, do shy away from that kind of thing, so not everybody's going to greet you back warmly. Um, and that doesn't matter, you don't need to feel, take that personally, that's just that person's attachment style. Um, and you know, if you keep up with smiling and saying their name and looking in their face, eventually they'll usually come round. I find that with a lot of old blokes in Australia, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I find that they you know, they put on this gruff exterior, you know, they're very good, like my, my grandparents' generation, they're all, and a lot of them can be very gruff when you first meet them. But, you know, after two or three sort of um, serves, uh, you know, two or three kind of conversations back and forth, they warm up and they're really gentle-hearted people. But they've just got that initial kind of, uh, point where they're meeting you when you're still a stranger, you know, they're, they're really putting on a very unfriendly exterior, but, you know, underneath, you know, it doesn't matter, if you're warm enough, they're usually, you know, most of the time, they're warm to you. And the other thing is, is that practice really builds confidence, you know, even if you're not confident or not feeling confident or you're feeling insecure about doing this, just give it a go anyway, because when you start seeing the positive feedback you get back, and how much people do respond well to it, you know, this will help increase your own confidence um, in, in, in doing it because this is certainly not something that came naturally to me. You know, even just eye contact with people was, was sort of pretty stressful and difficult when I was a child. Um, it was really stuff that, you know, and I'm still practicing now. I look at people and I think, do I remember their name? <laughs> I'm like, I can name right. And I'm thinking over. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things that the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Yeah, I love, there's a great uh, golf analogy by Fuzzy Zella, and he said, golf's a game of luck, and the more you practice, the luckier you get. <laughs> and I always remember that. I think it's perfect, and it applies to anything, not just golf. And this particularly, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, so just moving on to, to some other attachment rituals and ideas. Um, a lot of them are based around gifts, but it's really important that you understand that the gift isn't really the central idea in it. Um, 
you know, giving a lot of gifts to try and win somebody's love or friendship generally isn't a really good idea. It's just going to make you look weak. Um, so it's not really just about the gifts, but there are some really age-old um, gift-giving rituals that are about attachment, um, giving flowers, um, because it's something that smells nice, that's alive, that the person does have to take a little bit of care of, um, you know, and it's going to remind them of you. It's not something expensive or valuable. Um, you know, it is eventually. It's not a long-term burden they have to store somewhere. No, and it's not something that if you give someone flowers, they don't tend to feel like there's some obligation. Exchanging rings obviously is is a um, is an age-old one. You know, and we do it when we get married, and we do it in different times in our life. Particularly if you're going to be distant or away from somebody who you really love and you care about. Um, you know, out of sight, out of mind, you know, is actually scientifically pretty true. Um, and if we can keep ourselves, feel, if we can keep the person that is away from us feeling that we are close, um, we'll keep that attachment alive. Um, and, and that can even just be with your kids when they're through the day through school. I mean, we've given um, all of our kids um, a picture of, of us with them. So each one of them has a picture of them with their mum and dad, all smiling that they've got in their wallet. Um, you know, a, a picture of yourself um, for your husband or, or wife to put on their desk at work or in their locker at work. Um, you know, um, don't be frightened of, of you know, having pictures taken of yourself that you give to your friends. Um, because this idea of, of a face is extremely powerful. I mean, how often do you see magazine covers that a, a face is not the cover? I mean, fairly rarely. You know, um, it is usually a face that is the front color cover of magazines because they know, because that's what sells them. Um, we watch TV, we see faces. We are really very, very wired um, to, to respond to other people's faces and to faces that we find familiar. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of people now are probably better attached to the newsreader on the nightly news <laughs> and feel that they're, they're somebody that they know and they're friends with than maybe even some of their own kids um, because they're not spending enough time doing doing face-to-face -face activities. You know, photos is one way when you're apart from each other but there's also things that, that are, you know, again, age-old rituals of things that we do that build friendships. Having coffee together, um, having a meal together where you sit across from each other and you spend time looking at each other's faces. Playing cards instead of watching TV. Yeah, playing play cards. Um, all of these things give an opportunity for a lot of face-to-face -face contact between people, which is, is very powerful at building attachment um, and, and really deepening friendships. And you had a good one too. Kim often gives me a um, handkerchief with her perfume on it. Mm. And that's a, that's a really old one. Yeah. But that's, that's again, it's just, it's not visual, but it's, you know, it's, it's obvious, it's sensual and, um, and it really works, you know. It's, it's, and again, it's not a burden. It's not, it's not something I'm really burdened with. It's just a nice little thing that does help me remember you. Yeah. And I, I'm sure we all probably remember an auntie or somebody that we know that that sends you know, perfume cards and, and you open it and, and you straight away do feel like that person is close to you. You remember them and it brings all of that, that nice warmth and closeness back. Um, you know, these are all rituals that are very common and very familiar to us because they are so important and because they are so powerful.